Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do an exercise called binary agent. Uh, return an in English translated sentence of the past binary string. The binary string will be space separated. Now, I figured out a lot of this off the screen because I had to do some researching. Um, I'm not going to do the research on here because I think it's more effective if we do this quickly, but I am going to try to spell it out well so it's easier to follow. First off, I'm going to extract the string into a separate one. So, um, you know, binary data. I'm going to create a function called uh, binary data, and I'm going to pass this string into the binary data. And uh, this way, if I, 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 I can play around with this. So if I go console.log, the binary data, you can see that it prints out this, uh, this string entirely. Now, um, to break the binary data up, the binary data is separated by space. So we can go, we can split the binary data based on uh, the spaces. So we split based on the space, and then we have this, which is a list. Now we can call length on it. We can see that there's 21 characters in here, and so uh, we've got it split into here. Now, here we could have a, at position one, now we're dealing with an individual data point, right? So, um, yeah, we could call this uh, individual uh, binary uh, binary a bit, individual bit, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So with an individual bit, we could console log that. Now, the bit is fine, um, but we need to translate this, right? And so what we want to do here, you can see this is a binary bit, this is a binary bit, so capital A is, is just triple zero, and um, yeah, all of these have their own binary codes. But what we want to do first is we want to do parse integer. So. Uh, parse int on 10. <clears throat> that, yeah, somehow parse integer just translates these things. <clears throat> and this is called a radix situation. And so we want to set the radix to 2 and then pass the string into parse integer. So to do that, we're going to say um, parse int, and then we're going to pass in the individual bit and in a, a radix situation. Now, so now we get 65. Um, so 65 can be converted into a character code using a string dot from care code. And so if you see 65, if we, what is it? If we run it here, 65 actually translates to an uppercase A. So the string from care code. And so we could actually, you know, copy and paste this directly into here. Um, here we have the, yeah, we, have the, we could call this the character code. Character code um, equal that. And then we pass the character code into the console log. And now we can say um, string dot parse. Is it string? Parse int? Dot, no, no. From care code is equal to this. Cool, and now we've got a letter. And so now our letter works like that. So we just need to basically break this into our element here. Now we're just passing in the first string, so we need to find a way to do this programmatically, right? And so we should do this, that up here. So we can do this binary split thing up here. And um, to do that, we can say, and then we just say, yeah, well, actually, instead of just doing that, we can just take this whole bit. I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so now if we were to pass back the individual bit, well, we'd be passing back, uh, let's let this equal to the result. Uh, Console.log the result. Cool, so now once we set the individual bit here, if we pass it in, we do that. Um, now we don't need the individual bit there, so we can say, but instead of saying at zero, what we want to do is return all of them, right? And so we're going to need to make this uh, an individual. So let's, instead of individual bit, let's call this um, the data set, the binary data set. Binary data set is equal just to the split. And then we, um, <clears throat> we want to go binary data set dot for each. And we want to pass in a function of element no, let's call it a data point, binary data point, right? 
one, two, three. And if we were to console log here, the um, the binary data point, uh, you'd see that we're passing it in each time. And how are we doing it? We're passing it in as a string. Okay, cool. So we're, we're going through here. And now instead of having to parse the individual bit, now we can actually do that. So if we're going to get the character codes, we can uh, get the character codes by setting the character code is equal to the parsed int. And then we pass, let's console.log the character code. And instead of individual bit, we're going to say individual data point. Individual data point. Oh, I deleted the wrong thing. Okay, so now we're passing through here. We're getting the individual character codes for each one of these letters, which is great because we've got the character codes. This was, we're running the, the same situation we were doing here. So now we can take this string at character code and use this up here. So instead of the, yeah, we don't need to console log yet. We need to say string.characterCode. And we could set this equal to let the deciphered letter equal that. And if we were to console log the deciphered letter, cool, now aren't bonfires fun? Aren't bonfires fun? Cool, so now that we're getting the character codes that we need, we need to pass this in. Well, so let's set up a um, deciphered, let's let deciphered, message equal uh, empty string. And then here, instead of console logging the deciphered letter, let's go add the deciphered letter onto the deciphered message. And then we should be able to return the deciphered message at the end and we get the result. And so the results coming from here. Um, all of this stuff is now, we've translated it into the binary agent. Um, and we should be good to go for each. This is a, it's a semicolon here. I like to keep the function separated from where we're declaring things. So I think that kind of helps. Um, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to get more specific, you could just say, you know, string dot split dot for each, and then you wouldn't need this line of code. Because we, you can you can just split the string right there instead of having to save it uh, here. Yeah, we could change this to having arrow functions, um, and then here we're setting character code. Here we could actually just get rid of this here. Um, well, actually, instead of doing character code, we could just get rid of here, and then paste this into here. Though I wouldn't like doing this because I like keeping it like this because. It doesn't matter to me if the code's on more line. This way I can say, okay, they're passing in a string, they're splitting the string, and they're, they're doing for each of them, they're getting a binary data point, and then they're setting the character code into each of the binary data points with a radix, um, even though I didn't know that until I just looked it up. This is, I don't, you never really use this stuff, or at least I don't. Um, so then we have a deciphered letter that we, have, that we pull the string from, so we take that character code into the string. So this is readable right? Whereas a lot of the answers aren't readable. And then, so we, then we add to the deciphered message, the deciphered letter, and then we return the deciphered message. So this code is, is readable to me. And I like that. I wouldn't actually go any further with this. Um, there's some ways that you could probably do it, make it an explicit return. Um, <clears throat> I think you could go map and then do for each here or, uh, and then return here. And then instead of deciphered message, you just return this. But something is happening. Oh. And then you just return the deciphered letter. Uh, dot join. Yeah. And so this would make it a little bit more succinct. Yeah. Actually, I think that this is still good because you're... You're making it still clear. It's, it's still pretty much readable. It's like, okay, we're splitting it. We're mapping out each point. Or we're translating the character code. For, we're translating the binary data into a character code. And then we're going from the character code to a deciphered letter. And then we're returning the deciphered letters. And then we're joining them all together 
without a space. You know, if we added a space in there, it would be crazy. With exclamation points, it'd be crazy. But yeah, I actually like this the most. So, um, so that's useful. Uh, yeah, cool. If we run the test, I hope they pass. Great. Um, yeah, so I really like this one. I think it's a great way to learn. I hope you guys found this useful, and um, we'll see you in the next lesson.